Well, I went and done it again. I broke my V959. I was out playing and uh, outside. And uh, here's a tip for those of you out there. When you're flying these, make sure you have the sun at your back. You don't want it in front of you because these helicopters can easily fly into the sun and you'll lose sight of it. And that's all she wrote in my case. Uh, what broke on it is very common for these. Uh, for both, I ended up breaking both the uh, one of the, my prop rotors, and also I broke the mast, the carbon graphite carbon uh, composite uh, mast for one of the arms. Um, but fortunately, both of these can be very easily replaced. Spare parts are widely available, on, especially on Banggood.com. Um, in fact, uh, this replacement mask only costs a dollar on Banggood. I'll include a link to this video to show show this for those of you who need uh, some replacement masks. But I'm going to go over the steps required to to repair these, to repair both of these items here in this video. Now so. I mentioned that. Uh, you can get these parts from banggood.com and several other places for especially on eBay to repair uh, your uh, quadcopter but in the meantime most of these places uh, end up coming from China so it could take up to uh, a month for your part to get here uh, so one thing that you could do in the meantime is to jury rig a replacement mast in this case I did did it out of uh, a bamboo barbecue skewer I have, I'll include a link here to show how to do such um, this isn't for acrobatics, and keep in mind this is the, a real temporary fix. So uh, as soon as your part gets in, comes in the mail, you want to replace this bamboo stick because it's not nearly as sturdy as the carbon graphite composite uh, mast. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is replace the mast. Um, you may notice that I've placed a plastic bag underneath the quadcopter. And the reason I'm doing this is the, that carbon graphite the ma that the mast is made of tends to splinter uh, into tiny pieces and I want to try to keep them all in one section here and I also want to be careful not to get any of those splinters in my, into my hand uh, they're very difficult to remove uh, carbon graphite is pretty nasty stuff uh, and another shat. thing I want to stress before I do pull it out is you also want to remove the plug out of the uh, circuit board so you follow it up from the, the uh, mast and gently pull that plug out of the circuit board your fingernails if you can. There we go. Okay. Okay, after playing around with the tweezers a bit, I discovered that it's much easier to just gently grab the top end of the cable that goes through it and the bottom end of the cable and gently pull it out, pull the shaft out from the fuselage structure. So, and you notice that one fell right apart, but uh, this one's still attached here. So the next thing we're going to need to do is I'm going to remove uh, this cover here and also I'm going to show how to remove this shaft from the wire, separated from the wire uh, here in a second. Now I'm going to show how to separate the mast from the wire. Um, some people would just snip the end of the wire off and resolder these, but I find an easier way to do this is that if you took a pair of pliers and grab the shaft diagonally with the pliers, not don't grab it flat, but try to grab it on the diagonal ends of the of the shaft, and then squeeze gently, squeeze. You can crack this like an eggshell open by doing such. That's the weak point is these diagonal ends. Again, um. I really wished I was wearing gloves, but uh, we're going to try to get by without gloves here to avoid splinters. But notice how it's cracking up as I go down to the end of it. And this mast is about ready to be removed. Let's see if I can open it up. And there we go. And just dispose of these two pieces of the mast. Now I have our replacement mast here. Um, but you don't just want to insert it in this hole. You, to insert this into the uh, motor's support, you need to first remove this uh, section of the uh, motor support. And to do such, 
you take a flathead, a tiny modeler's flathead screwdriver, and insert it in there and just pry it off. It'll pop off. Very easily pops off, actually. Okay, now the replacement mast and the wire really doesn't fit well. Uh, there's not enough room for both of them uh, the way it is uh, right out of the uh, as soon as it's removed. So what I did is I took a paper clip, heated up the end of it over the stove, and widened this hole along the top by melting it. This is just plastic. Now this case really doesn't provide much support to this mass, so it's not really important that it be uh, as snug as it was originally. The support is actually provided on the in inboard side because this is where I really need to insert it at the end to get the full support. So again, there's no, no real problem in widening uh, the out outboard case so that this mask can fit through. So all I've got to do now is put the wire on the top where I widened it and insert the mask. That I want to insert this plug or this mast in the main uh, engine support, motor support area and slide it all the way in. Okay, and now it's in there. And now I can put this mast on or the, the cover on. Again, I gotta. I think this is upside down. Wait a second. Yeah, I think it will fit that way too. There we go. And close it up until it snaps. And there you go. Now, again, you notice that the original the wire goes through the center of these masts, but um, this is going to break again. It's inevitable. I'm going to take it out there. It's probably going to break again. So all I need to do is just gently wrap it around a few times to take up the slack. And also it helps to um, put a little piece of tape to hold it in place. So this, is, this can be adjusted a little bit later. So the repair is almost done. What I need to do is take the quadcopter Move these parts out of the way. Insert this end of the mast into the quadcopter until it's snug. And simply take the plug and reinsert it into the circuit board. And that should be good to go. Okay, that's the simple fix for the mast. Um, I know it doesn't look pretty, but take my word for it, you're going to break this again. This is the second time I've broken a mast. <laughs> so, now let's take a look at the uh, propeller. Okay, now we're focusing on repairing the prop rotor, the bent prop rotor we have here. Um, these rotors that I have on here are the, the newer GWS uh, higher performance prop rotors. But one thing about them is they're, they work, they fly this thing great, but uh, they're a lot flimsier, a lot smaller than the standard prop rotors that come with this. So they are even more prone to damage than the standard ones that you get. So what I'm going to try to do first is to try to repair this one here by just simply bending it back into place. A lot of the times when you're out in the field and you bend up your prop rotor, you can actually try to repair it by just bending it back into place. Uh, that works a lot. Um, I've set, uh, salvaged several of my prop rotors by just doing such for a few more flights at least. Um, so what I'm going to try to do first is to bend it. So let's see if that, that can be done. And if it doesn't, I'm just going to replace it. My. Well, what do you know about that? I was going to show how to replace this, <laughs> but I think I might be able to repair this. Now the way to check it is, you need a uh, reference mark, and then you're going to turn this. I'm going to use uh, the, the crease of my finger here, and turn it, and I'm seeing it's coming up a little bit low, so I'm going to bend it up a little bit more. Okay, setting it to the crease of my finger, trying to hold my hand steady too. It's about right. 
Well, folks, I think I might have it. And a quick way to check it is to put a battery in and run it and then look at it end on to see if uh, uh, it's close to the plane. Okay, so I got a spare battery. Um, again, just turning it here. Uh, huh. It appears to be in plane, but we'll find out here shortly. Um, one thing I want to say is uh, if I don't show you how to, rep <laughs> to replace these, I'll do so in a future video. But I, again, you notice these are not the standard props that come with this. Um, these are the GWS, I believe it's 5443 higher performance props and it does make a difference in flight I noticed it very much that it uh, doesn't tend to cause or these I haven't seen this settling issue that you see with these in hover if you're trying to descend and hover you have sometimes have settling problems uh, where you can't control the descent these have no problem stopping coming down uh, but one thing is if you notice their support shaft is shorter than the standard props and because of that, you have to include a spacer, uh, especially if you're using this with the, the V959 models. Um, otherwise, uh, the gear disengages from the motor down below. And for a spacer, it's very simple to make a spacer. Um, I got one around here, and I'll show you it shortly. I make the spacers out of a, just a uh, juice box straw. I snip little pieces off here about three millimeters in length each and I put place them around the base of the uh, propellers just under the propellers uh, again it's a drink box straw just a simple drink box straw works great for spacers on, on these so we're back to trying to see if uh, I've repaired the propeller by simply bending it so I'm going to insert the battery oh I got a battery in there already never mind let's just do that plug this in and for those of you I'm sure you're all aware of this. You want to leave this. Oh, that battery's dead. Oh, no, it's running. You want to leave your, uh, when you insert your battery, you want to put it on a level surface. You can either put it on its back or on its stomach and then plug the battery in. And you wait until you see this slow flashing red light, slow flashing red light. That tells you that the gyros are spun up and ready to go and it knows uh, the horizontal plane very well. Okay, now. What we're going to do is spin this up. I'm going to hold on to it, and it's, we're going to look at the edge, edge on of this blade to see if we see much wobbling. And actually, I'm pretty darn close. It seems to be pretty close. So, next, let's try to fly it and see if it flies. Okay, let's see if this uh, repair works. Let's see if it flies. It's a windy day outside, so I'm not taking it outside today. Very windy, actually. But uh, let's see if I can at least hover this with the repair. And apparently it, it works. So, again, that's how you repair the mast and how to do a quick unbending repair of the propellers. Um, uh, eventually, I'm going to change that propeller, and when I do so, I'll put up another video showing how to swap out the propellers. So, until the next video, uh, this is camera repair. Make sure you check out my camera repair videos. <laughs> if you have something problems with your camera, such as lens errors, or, or you need to recover photos, you accidentally uh, erased your your photos off your camera. I, I can show you how to do that if you look at my videos. So I hope this helps and I'll see ya.